and welcome to Travel Beans. I'm Emma, behind the camera is Alex, and today we are exploring the South Downs National Park. In this two-part series, we explore the closest national park to London, the South Downs, before it all goes horribly wrong the following day. In this video, we visit Arundel Castle, wander around some creepy woods, no! Run! and find one of our favorite wild camping spots to date. In the last video, we went and visited some of the places in Alex's neck of the woods that he had never got the opportunity to go and see before. And this week, we're gonna be doing the same for me. Before we set off, I just want to introduce you guys to our newest addition to the van, which I think makes it super homely. And that is our newly upholstered cushions. These were done by ML Solutions, which is a really lovely family run business. Lisa and Mark, thank you so much for doing such a fantastic job on these cushions. We had to shout you out. If anyone around the south of the UK is looking for a place to get their cushions or foam upholstered for camper vans or boats or anything like that. Also, we've spoken to Lisa and she's given us a discount for 10% off anyone who's come from our video. So if you do decide to book with them, we'll leave a link down in the description below and make sure you mention Travel Beans. As someone who is not from the southeast of England, I find this area very fancy. It's so funny because like, I, I'm sure if you spoke to local people, they wouldn't consider this posh. But for example, look at this. This is a college in this area and it looks like Hogwarts. It is probably the fanciest building around, to be fair, yeah. yeah. I, as a kid, when I first moved to England, I was like, oh my God, is that actually Hogwarts? <laughs> <laughs> this is the kind of area where you will buy some chips, fries, thick cup fries for the Americans, <laughs> and it's gonna be like five pounds. <laughs> yeah, well back in your hometown, you can get a full on fry up for one ninety nine. I'm not even joking, one ninety nine. <laughs> my prom in that building when I was 16 <laughs> back in the day. That's glamorous. And it was awful. Actually this is a question I have. I feel like proms are definitely more of an American thing and it's kind of eked its way into like the UK in recent years. Recent years, like in the last like maybe 20 years. Is everyone in the UK experiencing really crappy proms or was that just me because it was like the beginning of proms being a thing? I can also back that up. My prom was rubbish. <laughs> I'm wearing a suit that was way, way too big for me. I can always picture that you, like scrawny owl and swamped by a <laughs> suit. Please tell me it wasn't a white suit. No. <laughs> uh, completely sober and just like the guys effectively on one side and the girls on the other side. Aww. and. Just like, wishing just, you were on the other side with all the girls. Well, just nothing fun. Nothing fun happened. Did you have a date for your prom? I had a girlfriend Did and she, she was there. But she didn't want to go with you? I, Did you not go together? I don't think, like, I guess, I don't remember, is it like being a thing like we go together? We didn't have like a prom queen or prom king. Right. Yeah, we had that. Really? Yeah. In England, you had a prom yeah. queen and prom king? Yeah. Actually, my friend Emma, I don't think she watches these videos, but Emma was prom queen. Wow. Yeah. First stop on our tour of the South Downs is Arundel. As you first drive into the town centre, you cannot miss the thing it is most famous for, and that is Arundel Castle. You can see it behind me, towering above the whole town, looking down on us all, all of us peasants down here. And the town itself is so cute. I mean, look at the post office. Have you seen a more beautiful post office in all of your life? Something I really love about castles is that there's something a bit like spooky but also kind of magical and mysterious about them. I guess it's because they have all these like hidden stairways and doorways and you don't know where they go and there's something kind of mystical about it. <laughs> Even the toilet is kind of magical here. Yeah, exactly. I'm inside the castle toilet trying to relax. Not cool. Okay, kind of cool. <laughs> also, I don't know about you, but for some reason, 
the old medieval weapons terrify me like way more than they're modern so invasive. ones. <laughs> they look like you would die a really slow death. They look like know? they're going to go in one hole and out another hole. <laughs> oh my god, it's so <laughs> graphic. To be completely honest with you, I think it's worth paying the money to get in here just to go to the library because it is absolutely banging. I don't think I've ever seen such a perfectly designed library. The second you walk into the library, the lighting's different, the furnishings are different, they've got these velvet curtains everywhere, it just looks really cosy, like I just want to curl up on the sofa with a book. Emma's trying to tell me that this area isn't posh. Even the pheasants are bloody posh. <laughs> and I hate the way that these ugly lords and dukes reign over me, looking down. Like, look how ugly they all are. <laughs> Acting like they're better than you. <laughs> these are the people that are judging my West Country ass, and they've got no room for Meghan in their bloodline. <laughs> <laughs> this castle's been restored, and it, it, it just looks how a castle should look. We went to Neuschwanstein in Germany, and... It was rubbish. German <laughs> castles are rubbish. And English castles are just much better. <laughs> All German castles are rubbish. All of them are rubbish. <laughs> Coming here has given me a bit of an idea, actually. We need to ditch van life. And we need to go for castle life, because there is no other YouTubers doing it. And I think we could kill it on castle life. <laughs> Maybe. I saw a horse-drawn carriage at the front as well. <laughs> I would so be willing to trade in the van and get the horse-drawn carriage. <laughs> Some of you may not know that England actually has quite an up-and-coming wine scene and we have come to Tinwood Vineyards which is actually well known for its sparkling wine. Other vineyards are available. There are other vineyards available dotted around, the, especially the south of England. But it's well worth coming here if you are visiting this area. You can do tours of the vineyards and wine tasting, but as we're driving, we've decided to grab a bottle of the good stuff and take it with us to have this evening. After leaving the vineyard, we made our way to Kingly Vale Nature Reserve to see its ancient yew trees. So we're hiking up to see these ancient yew trees which are supposed to be absolutely spectacular and we're completely sidetracked by this field right now how magical and soft and flowing and just mesmerizing mesmerizing is this field i can't stop looking at it reminds me of is it gladiator or 300 i can't oh, remember which one. Oh yeah i think i think it's gladiator yeah yeah oh it's so lovely it looks so soft could watch this for hours yeah but we won't we won't because we have things to do and trees to see bug just flew in my eye <laughs> i can see it in there it lives there now <laughs> let us see him Anyway, hey, it's just a little bean. We are now in Kingly Vale Nature Reserve, which is home to some pretty ancient yew trees. These trees are freaking awesome because they can regenerate from every single part of it. So that's why you have about a million branches going off in every different direction, which I think conjures up images of like Robin Hood and fairy tales. <laughs> It looks like some Lord of the Rings to me. Yeah, Lord of the Rings, that'll do. There are supposedly lots of far more impressive yew trees dotted around this forest, but Al and I have been walking for at least five minutes and we haven't seen them. <laughs> so we're giving up. So we're giving up like good old beans. I think we found the yews that we're looking for. And how Blair Witchy is this? It's pretty freaky. It's very it's spooky. There's no like leaves on them and everything. And it's like, it would be the perfect backdrop for a horror movie. It's just like the Blair Witch Project. <sighs> no! Run! <laughs> Blair Witch, isn't it? <laughs> Love the way that the light shines through and all the green is growing around that tree. Yeah. And then this side, it's just dead. It's, yeah, like the light shining down. <laughs> 
Yeah, look at it. That's so it's cute. It's quite heavenly there. I love it. And fairy tale like, and then this side. Spooky and creepy. Also fairy tale like. <laughs> you see that? It looks like they're all going up. Yeah, 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 on the branches. Like stag mites or stag tights. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of those mushrooms that grow straight up out of the ground. One of those orange ones. Maybe it's the equivalent of like the tree's hair standing on end. Ooh. Spooked out. That is weird. I've never seen anything like that. Have you? <laughs> Getting a really weird eerie vibe here. I don't know, someone's been hacking away here. Oh, look, all the earth's been like pushed up around the sunlight. Oh. It's creepy. Cult things. I don't like it, let's get out of here. We're going back to the van and there's just a sign, just a thousand year old church down here. A thousand year old church. Caught you eating the mini cheddars. Much of mini cheddars. <laughs> Sometimes I forget how disgustingly English this country actually is. I usually tell people like, oh no, it's not all the stereotypes that you'd imagine before visiting. But sometimes it just is. That, lovely house, footpath to a thousand year old church, all in one. I think I've just noticed is how unusual it is to have a church in the UK not absolutely surrounded by gravestones. They're usually just everywhere. Yeah, they usually are. I've just noticed these are bloody gravestones. I don't know uh, why. But they look like They've been repurposed. Rocks. How do you know they're gravestones? Because they're shaped like gravestones and they've got writing on them. They do. And there's a few just on the top that look gravestone shaped as well. So I wonder if there are people buried around, but maybe they've just moved the gravestones. Look, there's writing over here. Look over here. You can make out there is a bit of writing on there. It's a bit like faded and weathered. You can see Same there. On this one. There's loads of these things. Yeah, now we've noticed it. The whole paths are just made out of gravestones. That's really cool. And now I feel really weird about walking on the path. Yeah, me too. Because it feels wrong <laughs> to be walking on the gravestones of people. But then if they're buried under the grass, is it wrong to tread on the gravestones? I mean, it's made out of a path, so it can't yeah, be wrong. Yeah, it just feels weird. After saying goodbye to the church, we made our way back to the van and set off in search of a wild camping spot for the night. Luckily, we ended up at one of our favourite spots to date in a great location where we enjoyed breathtaking views over the downs at sunset. Next time on Travel Beans. It all goes wrong when our poor little van runs into some trouble.